the life cycles of the stars and planets are the key question to understand the universe. The stars is formed from um, the atomic molecular clouds, but the detailed process we don't know. Here you're missing the real data. Gusto is going to provide such a data. Gusto is NASA supported Bloom Bone Telescope. It is launched from Antarctica to about 40 kilometers above the Earth. And Esron, together with Delft University of Technology, provide uh, three fire infrared cameras. Esron is uh, world leading in making detectors for infrared radiation. So we were asked to deliver uh, all the detectors for the mission. Augusto targets uh, three different uh, atoms. So we'll look at nitrogen, uh, carbon, and oxygen. Every atom that we want to look at radiates at a very specific frequency. So we can look in very high detail at the radiation coming out of these atoms. And these molecules are used as tracers for this interstellar medium and for the process of going from gas clouds to stars. What I really like about this detection technique is that you probe something that is thousands of light years away and you can measure the, the temperature, the density and the velocity of these molecules and very locally measure the specific conditions in space. In order to uh, see these very weak radiations, you need very sensitive detectors, which are based on the superconductivity, so you need a very low temperature. But that's still not enough, because you're not able to see these radiations from ground, because the water vapor will block this radiation. So you need either goes to the space or you go to the edge of the space. In principle, we can bring it in space, and we did it in the past, but it would be a very expensive mission. So the alternative that we developed for Gusto is basically a satellite on a balloon. It's a very benign way of bringing something in space, as opposed to the very violent rocket. We go to the edge of space, so we leave 99.9% .9 of the atmosphere behind us, and the 0.1% that we are left with still allows us to do our science. Because it's, it's cheap and it's benign, it allows you to fly experimental and, and recently developed uh, equipment, which you would not do for a multi-billion space mission. My role here on the ice in Antarctica uh, is to mainly support the lead instrument scientist for GUSTU on making sure that the, the detectors that we provided are ready and that the instrument is also ready. We launched from Antarctica because this is the only place in the world that allows us to have a very long duration balloon mission. In other places, we'll have issues bringing down the telescope without eating any population or crossing the airspace of different countries. Additionally, around December, that's when we launch, we have two things in our favor. We have 24 hours sun to power our solar panels, giving all the energy we need for the instrument. And then it also happens that around this time of the year, there is the polar vortex that is created in the South Pole. So without having any control of the balloon, you actually keep it in the location that you want. The last day of the year was a very epic day, of course. Uh, we were able to finally launch Gusto. We started early, uh, we did our, our tests and everything was working. Once in the launch pad, we repeat some of these tests and then we have to basically wait on the meteorologists uh, to say, okay, we can keep proceeding. It has been a long day by the time uh, the launch happened. It was really fantastic to see also the work of so many people throughout the years, slowly going up safely, it was for sure one of the most epic moments of my life. When 
I saw the Gusto was launched smoothly into the sky, I really feel my life has really achieved something. Gusto has recorded a lot of data. From those observations, we were going to make a 3D uh, plot. This 3D data helps to build a template of a galaxy. Based on this, eventually we hope we understand many, many other galaxies. Thank you.